Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn to joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish or joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. What beautiful and confusing words from Jesus. What beautiful and confusing words. As tempted as I was to preach on St. Peter and his arising to kill and eat the festival of liver mush and all things swine, this is what we really need to focus on. What is Christ talking about? Now, we're not enthusiasts to the point where, where we think that the Bible is speaking to us. But rather, it's an account, particularly the Gospels, are an account of things that have happened and promises that were made to the Apostles that also apply to us. So the opening the Bible and pointing to the Bible and saying, oh, the Lord led me to this, that, that, that's not real. That doesn't happen. What is the Lord trying to say to me today? Repent. That's what he's saying. Repent. Believe the gospel. Have the forgiveness of sins. I have that revelation every single day. And the Holy Spirit says, repent and he will forgive. And as we know, confession has two parts. One, that you would have sorrow for your sins. Two, that you would believe that Christ will, can and will forgive your sins. Now, this is a promise that is exemplified in Luther's small catechism, but it's one that we absolutely have to hold on to. That if we lose, we lose all hope. If we do, not, if we repent, which I don't even think this is possible, if we repent without the hope that Christ will forgive our sins, then it's not actual repentance. Repentance is more than just feeling bad. I could stand up here and make you feel bad and then walk away, but that's not repentance. Repentance is. Confessing your sins, feeling that inward guilt, that not, not the guilt that you got caught, which is the one we usually have, but the guilt that you have sinned against God in both thought, word, and deed, and against your neighbor, against those at Augustana, against those outside the walls of Augustana, everyone in whom you come in contact with, your spouses, your children, everyone. And so, when we look at these confusing words from Jesus, and the statement that keeps coming over and over and over, a little while you will see me, and you will see me no longer, and again, a little while, and you will see me. This is not a messianic magic trick. He's not covering himself up with the veil and then saying, now you see me, now you don't. And as we were talking about, and I had to bring this up in the sermon, what we were talking about in Bible study, and another reason why we should all be in Bible study, Christianity is not a hide-and-go-seek with Jesus. Jesus is not hiding from you. He happens to be under a veil at this current time, but he is not hiding from you. Christ does not hide from you. It is not your lifelong goal to search out and find Jesus. Christ finds you. And He finds you here at the font. 
He finds you even in that nagging, constant repentance. Yes, Christ is there too. Even when you feel that no one can love me. And I know we've all felt this. No one can love me. Or worse, no one should love me. Because I know things about myself that terrify even myself. And I think that if you're honest with yourselves, there are things that you will find that terrify yourself to your very core. And it's called sin. And we cannot make a big enough deal about it. Repent. And believe in these words that Christ, Christ our Lord, went to the cross so that we would have the forgiveness of sins. That does not mean, and I want to emphasize this very, very clearly, that does not mean that as Christians you're going to have an easy road. In fact, it's the opposite. If you're going to remain a Christian and in the faith, buckle up. It's going to hurt. Because you see, there's a reason why the world rejoices when we can no longer see Christ. And why the world can no longer see Christ. Because it believes that it has won. Just like Satan thought that the pinnacle of his success lay when Christ was crucified. He thought he had won when the Son of God was nailed to the cross. And in beautiful irony, it became his undoing. The time that he thought that he was lost, that, that he had won, he lost. And here's the realization for you. The times when you think that you are lost, Christ has found you. And the cross is the same place. He finds you there. He finds you at the foot of it in repentance. And then Christ comes and He grabs you by your chin and He lifts you up to look eye to eye to Him. And He says, fear not, little children. A little while and you will see me no longer. For I go to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. I shall ascend into heaven and will be seated at the right hand of God. But fear not, for I will come again to judge the living and the dead. And you will have no more sorrow, no more weeping, no more hurt and joy that abounds. It all sounds wonderful, but again, remember I say this, that Christ is not performing a magic trick. In every single word that He gives to us, we find these words, these words that seem confusing, to be words of true and absolute comfort. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow. Men, don't bring this up. But a woman has sorrow for she has known what was coming for quite some time and knew that pain was associated with it. Eve was told as much. And so that sorrow is not for the child, but the sorrow that would happen to her own body. The pain that a mother would endure. And I know some of you are like, well, what about epidurals? I'm, that's, that's, no, that's, a, that's, a, that's a moot point. The woman 
weeps and sorrows for herself because she knows that she is going to have the pain. But from her comes life. And once that baby is handed to the mother, all agony is forgotten. All pain to the body is forgotten. And so it is with Christ. Christ was beaten, He was crucified, He died, and He was buried. And guess what? He gave birth to you in the waters of holy baptism. And from that point on, He remembers the pain no longer. Just the joy of being able to call you His children. Only joy. Let this earth pass away. Let bad things happen. Be hurt. Be depressed. Cry. Weep. Lament. Remind the world just how damnable it is. But at the end of the day, remember that as the sun goes down, the Son of God will return. And then, there will be no more of that. There will be only joy. Thanks be to God. This truly is the understanding of the resurrection, the ascension, and the return of our Lord. So when you come up to receive His body and blood, you better be smiling.